Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this quick tip video, we're going to take a look at how to use the decimate modifier to speed up our cloth simulations. In this video, I'm going to be using this model of a fawn with symbols from the Malaposcas Virtual Museums. Links in the description. This statue was 3D scanned, and so it has a relatively high geometry count. While not an enormous model, it does have a quarter million faces. That shouldn't be too much of a problem if all we were going to do is render this. But say we wanted to add a piece of cloth draped over this object. Here I've created a simple grid, split it partway down the middle so that it'll drape over his shoulders. I'm going to add a cloth modifier to it, and I'm going to add a collision modifier to the statue. I do want the cloth to stick to the statue pretty well, so I'm going to turn up the friction. Now I'll go ahead and bake this simulation. This bake of 250 frames took 51.97 seconds. Part of the reason this took so long is the fact that this model is high poly. We do want to keep this original model for our render, but using the decimate modifier, we can create a proxy object for our cloth simulation. Here's how we can do that. The first thing I'm going to do is rename this object. Now I'm going to duplicate it with Shift D and right click so that it ends up in the same location as the first one. I'm going to rename this one to Fawn Low Poly. Now in my modifier properties, I'm going to remove the collision modifier for the moment. I'm going to hide my high poly fawn. And then with my low poly fawn selected, I'm going to add a decimate modifier. You'll see currently that our face count is 260,500. We can go ahead and start reducing this ratio. Here at 50%, we've barely seen a change in the topology of our object, but our face count has been reduced by half. Let's continue to lower this. Now, here I am at 5% of the original faces, 13,024. Now, obviously, we wouldn't want to render this object, but it should be just fine for our cloth simulation. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and apply the decimate modifier and then add a collision modifier. Going to the settings, you'll see that the friction is still set at 20. One of the things you'll find with a collision modifier is if you add it and remove it from an object, it will keep the settings it had previously. So its friction is still set at 20. I'm gonna bring back my high poly fawn and I'm gonna remove its collision modifier. Going back to my cloth object, I'm gonna go to the cloth settings and delete this bake. And now I'm gonna bake this again. This time, the bake took 8.73 seconds. This is a substantial speed increase. So now with this complete, I'll go ahead and play this animation. I'm going to go ahead and hide my low poly fawn and bring back my high poly fawn. And we see it works just as well as the low poly fawn interacting with the cloth. One of the problems I'm having is that his right arm is getting in the way of the cloth as it falls. Because we want this to drape smoothly over both sides, it would be really nice if his arm was out of the way. Because we're using a proxy object, it's really easy to do this. Hiding my high poly fawn again, I'll bring back my low poly fawn. With my low poly fawn selected, I'm going to jump into sculpt mode. The tool I want to use is called Lasso Trim. If we scroll down, we'll find box trim with a little side arrow. Click on this and hold, and then choose lasso trim. Using this tool, I can select the areas that I want to trim out of the model. Returning to object mode, we now have his arm out of the way. Returning to the first frame, I'll choose my cloth, delete my bake, and bake it one more time. This time, the bake took longer. But there's a reason for that. The first time we baked, because the right side had gotten crimped up, the whole scarf slid off the fawn's body. But this time, since both sides fell smoothly, it sticks to the body. Hiding my low poly fawn and re-enabling my high poly fawn, I can go ahead and add a subdivision surface modifier to my scarf and set it to smooth. And now we would just want to find a frame that has the look we're going for. I'll go ahead and add a solidify modifier and apply the cloth simulation. 
because of the margin settings for the cloth simulation, there is a gap between the model and the cloth. But now that I've had the cloth simulation, I can go ahead and grab it and move it into place. Of course, at this point, I could go into sculpt mode and tweak this cloth simulation if there are parts of it that I didn't care for. So there you have it, a simple way to use the decimate modifier as a way to reduce your models so that they're more usable with a cloth simulation. I hope this quick tip is helpful and that it inspires you to make something awesome. If you're enjoying this series, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch the video, and I'll catch you next time.